we want chapter five. Settle in. It's going to be about 40 minutes. Get excited. I'm happy you guys are all here. If it's your first time, buckle up. If you've been here before, oh yeah, 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 and they hooked up in the restaurant. If you've been here before, well, you know how it goes. I was a little hot. Chapter 5 of 9. Stuck Pig. the next day. You couldn't go back to Abby's house after your second and third cop murders of the year, and Abby couldn't exactly stay where she was either. The police would surely be knocking on her door again soon, especially considering it was her Bentley which was used to ram the car of the slain officers. So you rented an Airbnb close to your old restaurant and walked there once it was dark. Abby drove to meet you at the house, which is where you're all staying now until you can think of a better plan. This footage is showing up everywhere I look. It's so surreal. How do we even get here, Z? We got here because these shitheads don't know when to stop pushing it. I know that footage makes it seem like I'm just icing these cops like a hardened criminal, but could I just remind everybody that this only started because a cop almost murdered me in cold blood? I was just defending myself that night, and that's all I was doing yesterday, too. I was defending Purse, too, because he didn't do shit. Well, I mean, aside from helping us rip off your parents, but that's a victimless crime anyway. (sighs) Yeah, you're right. It's not even that you're wrong about any of that. It's just... God damn, we are in so much trouble now. Lol, well, yeah. The cat is pretty much out of the fucking bag now, isn't it? There's no really denying it anymore now that the footage has made the rounds in the media. They're in a frenzy over it. I'm thinking of just coming clean and telling our fans the original story. Are you sure that's a good idea? Abby, have you even seen the discourse around this? Like, obviously corporate media is painting me as a bad guy, but like everyone else, like the people who actually matter to our movement, they're talking about me like some kind of folk hero. This mishap is actually incredibly good for business, just like it was when the news story came out linking me to the first dead cop. It's not even like I planned this shit, but it turns out waging war against the police is entirely compatible with the brand we're building here. I know that. Can you just see where I'm coming from, though? I'm just scared about what could happen to us. Like, we're in so deep with these money crimes, too. What if they find out about that? Oh, um, Abby... They, uh, they did find out? That's why the cops busted Percy, remember? I thought they busted him because you sent him a photo of him once. I, uh, no, I mean, okay, yeah, but that was an accident. Like, yes, Purse, I should have mentioned, one time I fucked up and accidentally let a photo of you slip. But I didn't give your name or anything, and it was, like, an innocent mistake. So maybe that's why they busted you? Who can even really say at this point? And anyway, I made a daring rescue attempt and killed your captors, and now here you are. So everything's cool, right? We're cool. So, I'm confused. Did the cops find out about our Bitcoin scams or not? I mean, probably not. I doubt it, actually. But when you think about it, what crime is even being committed? TBH, on paper, it really just looks like the father has been working with his daughter to buy a bunch of bitcoins. Look at Percy's smile. (laughs) He's literally just cheesing. (laughs) And the money just wound up in a family account, your account. If they wanted to prove the crime was committed, I guess they can try. But from where I'm standing, it looks like the cop murder caught on tape is the crime they're prepared to take a lot more seriously. Yeah, which doesn't actually make me feel much better. I can't even go back to my house now. What about my horse? I need to feed him. Listen, don't worry about Dave Hoof. We'll figure out a way to get that boy fed. I'll make sure he's the fattest horse on this island when all is said and done. I'm working on solutions to all of this. Not to doubt your master plan, but what could possibly be the solution to this? Are you going to use our billions to buy off the police? 
No way. I'm not giving the cops a fucking dime of our hard-earned money. My plans were already in place way before yesterday's incident. Yeah, uh, Dave Hoof is David Hasselhoof. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Franco. I wish you'd actually let me in on all your secret plans. I'm your partner in crime. You're supposed to be able to trust me. I do trust you, Abs. I just don't always want to overwhelm you with too much information. You've been doing so great with your dad, it would be a shame to clutter your head with new things to worry about. Well, now my head is really cluttered because of certain police assassinations taking place in broad daylight, captured on video, which are now going viral. So can you just tell me what's going on? You'll see. We're gonna get some help soon. This is actually why I had Purse come yesterday. I'll need a hand coordinating this. What do you mean, help? Oh, oh no. Your cough is getting worse. I really hope it's not. I'm sure it's not that. Listen, I've just been pushing too hard. Shooting cops, scurrying around, catching a little cold, that's all. But besides, I've been checking my toes out every day. Not a single COVID toe in sight. <laughs> Shout out to COVID toes. I don't think that's really an indication of anything. I'd suggest you get tested, but... Man, even people who aren't fugitives can barely get tested. Don't worry, I'm fine. Pretty sure I've got, like, you know, herd immunity by now or something. A single person can't have herd immunity. I thought you were supposed to be smart. Well, think again, bitch. Anyway, I don't want to be late for this thing that's about to happen. Come on, Paris, it's time for a drive. You and Percy head to Abby's car. She brought a BMW this time, which is a bit less noticeable than cruising around the island in a Bentley. There are a dime a dozen around here. You'll miss the Bentley, though. It's served you well, especially in its final moments when it was used as a several hundred thousand dollar battering ram. Percy has no idea where you're going. All he can do is glance at your phone sometimes, which you're holding for navigation purposes. You've set the destination for a place near Jackson Point, which is one of the westmost parts of the island. A place that can facilitate boating activity in a way that's much more discreet than anything going on by the docks near the downtown area. A few times, Percy attempts some small talk. You humor him, nodding along, occasionally turning your head to throw him a smile. Seems like he's skirting the topic of his feelings? Something like that. That's nice, Purse. You're super flattered and all, but it would behoove him to come to grips with the magnitude of what's about to take place on this island. In the not-too-distant future, some very loud noises may be assailing his ears, but they won't be coming from wedding bells. Man, what? Clowns rise up. You pull up near the docks and get out of the BMW to find a bunch of guys hanging around. Oh, I should I should add really quick. I'll cut the music for right now. Uh, Z, uh, in the time between chapter two and now, Z became a world famous influencer based around her concept of a clown sona, which is a vessel that you use to. Uh, commit acts of pranksis, which are anything you do just to just to be funny. Like this Bitcoin scam is just one big act of pranksis. And so Z has like a couple million followers now that she has like acolytes to her cause. Okay. And there's there's clown gender and it's a whole thing. You pull up near the docks and get out of the BMW to find a bunch of guys hanging around. Percy looks bewildered, but your confident demeanor reassures him that this is part of the plan. No, look, he's got, he's got a Z shirt on. You study his reaction as he connects the dots. Of course he knows what's going on now that he's seeing their reactions. Not to him, but you. They're all looking awestruck as you approach. He must realize now that these guys you invited to the island, just like him, but they didn't come by ferry. They arranged their own transport via privately owned boats. You say nothing for a moment, taking it all in. You bask in the hushed reverence. 
Their disposition is becoming quite familiar to you. Just another bunch of simps for your collection. Nynx gets it. It's not murder if it's Pranxis. Ones with completely different utility than Percy, ones that aren't nearly as soft. You begin eyeing some of the hardware they brought. They came well equipped, just as instructed. These plans were in the works all week, and some of these boats took well over a day of sailing to get here. As you assess your new recruits, you can feel Percy fidgeting to your side. Clearly he wants some answers. He's wondering why you didn't tell him about this earlier. I'm telling you now, aren't I? He obviously can't dispute that, but his body language is still unsatisfied. That's fine. Now is precisely the right time to debrief him so he knows how he fits into the plan. Sorry, Purse. This was top secret stuff, and we were so busy with our financing operations, which were much more important. I've been back channeling with some of our most dedicated followers. One's in it for the long haul. You know, guys like you, you know? I asked guys with boats to rally other guys pretty close by, and they organized low-key trips here to the west side. No ferries, no downtown action, no heat from cops. He's clearly grappling with the behind-the-scenes logistics of this. The who's, the where's, the when's. Some of these boats are from the Massachusetts coast. There's a few from Long Island. We got sailors here from all up and down the eastern seaboard, actually. Last I checked with the guys on point, we had almost 26 boats headed here. But there might have been more added since. I don't know why I made it 26 instead of 20. That just That's just how I read it. You wouldn't believe how psyched these guys were to get the invite. Lol, well, maybe you would. They're good people. Just a bunch of dedicated, hardworking jubilites, ready and willing to step up and do some crazy shit. Percy looks overwhelmed, maybe even intimidated to the untrained eye. But you know that isn't it. You can tell exactly what that look is. It's concern that his role of importance may be rapidly diminishing before his eyes. You put a stop to that quickly. Don't worry, Purse. I brought you here for a reason. You'll be out front, leading this crew in terms of the necessary logistics. Look at this shit. Just a bunch of dudes on boats after a long voyage wondering what the fuck to do and where to go, whatever. You'll take the reins on that. But you gotta be careful, since the cops are still crawling all over this island looking for us, okay? He nods, more confidently than last time. What the fuck do you think this is? Gathering of the fucking juggalos? Well, it isn't. Not yet, at least. Don't worry. There'll be time and place to wear the paint. But for now, you play it straight. Listen, plain clothes, plain faces. You're all just a bunch of average locals. Understood? I looked around a bunch of air... I booked you all a bunch of Airbnbs, so make yourself comfortable. And I don't see much of a reason why you should be making plans to honor your checkout dates, if you know what I mean. We're digging the fuck in. Now, is everybody cool with that? Purse, make sure all these guys get to wherever they need to go. Ubers, taxis, rent some vans, jack some cars, however you want to do it. I'm counting on you, man. Now everybody get moving. <laughs> I couldn't think of a single person. That, that needs to be here for this more than Big Neek 65. How you doing, man? How are you doing? How is life? Z holding the gun. Big Neek 65 in the house. Rock Cargo 863236 in the house. Listen, I've got some content to manage. Two weeks later. 16 million followers, by the way. After two weeks of constant media coverage of your recent exploits, your brand has skyrocketed. Oh, G Agent Lizzie Joey here? Great, I was nervous about Agent Lizzie. Both the video captured by a witness and the dashcam footage have been playing constantly. Members of the press have gathered on the island to cover the manhunt while the police presence has grown. But the intensification of recent events hardly has been limited to circumstances on the island. The entire country has suddenly ignited in civil unrest over police brutality and the extrajudicial murders of black people at the hands of law enforcement. Something is stirring in America. It's as if the more comfortable parts of the nation have decided to finally wake up to the fact that they've been living in the police state for longer than they previously cared to admit. But you've noticed another development cropping up alongside this wave of righteous political election. Leeching off the roiling energy of the nation 
Jubilites have begun their own gatherings in huge numbers. At first, no one thinks much of another few gangs of painted buffoons slipped in between the garish Trump motorcades and doomed boat parades. But before you know it, you can barely point a camera anywhere without televising another preposterous gaggle of circus riffraff clowned up behind their masks. Certainly, too many clowns for the comfort of corporate media, but if you're being honest, maybe too many for yours as well. You begin to wonder what you've unleashed upon the nation. Quickly, social media seemed to realize that this was a different flavor of political action. The sheer number of clowns with guns roaming the streets are making the people with all the money and power very nervous. Like, maybe the usual methods of media propaganda aimed at subduing these movements won't work on this crowd. There is a sense that once the clowns are out of the barn, closing the door won't do much good. And maybe there's something to it. As the police escalated their violent brutality in retaliation to the unrest, the Jubilates seized upon the chaos. Once they saw it was possible to drive police out of an area by force, they grew bolder in their aggression. No longer were your clowns an aimless gathering of oddities, a sideshow of loitering farceurs. No, that's a sheriff's badge. They were hijacking the political atmosphere. Rock Cargo 863236, thank you for the follow. They were hijacking the political atmosphere toward their own objectives, and in turn, yours. Your detractors got a lot of airtime vilifying your followers for perverting a righteous social movement, and you find it hard to disagree with their point. But neither the slander from bad faith corporate shills nor the legitimate criticism from genuine activists ever seemed to stick. Doove in the house. The spectacle, the spectacle of it drew even more people in, who would begin wearing the paint. And the more painted faces showed up, the more your movement appeared to stake its claim as a force entirely distinct from the origins of the civil unrest. A force now taking the momentum of your once modest social media campaign and flooring it. It now looks like police precincts everywhere may start falling like dominoes, and you see no reason to tell your people to take their huge floppy shoes off the gas pedal. But you can't put too much personal focus on what's happening around the country, because there's way too much happening locally that you need to deal with. You've been ordering your new recruits to take care of business here on the island while you're in forced hiding. You have a team dedicated to make sure that Abby's horse stays fed, for instance. With the help of Percy, an infrastructure of local jubilate activity is beginning to emerge, which can operate somewhat autonomously from your direct supervision. Your, earnest, your inner circle directly overseeing this infrastructure has begun calling itself Ring 3. Being able to delegate important stuff is good news, considering your health has been in decline. After showing symptoms of COVID-19, you decided to self-quarantine in the Airbnb. Abby and Percy rented another one across town while trying to stay out of view. You hold down the fort all by yourself. You have plenty of time alone to plot and scheme in between your coughing fits and fevered visions. Admittedly, this is not the most fun you've had during your brand's rise to international notoriety. The carefree days of drinking expensive wine at Abby's house while in perfect health and bullshitting about gender are starting to feel like a distant memory. But the administrative needs of your movement don't take a break just because you get sick. The show must go on. Since that day you went with Percy to meet the first few recruits fresh off their boats, thousands of additional Jubilites have infiltrated the island using the same method. Boats arrive at the western docks, usually at night. They unload and head back to the mainland for more, while new recruits settle in wherever they can. Airbnbs and campsites mostly, while some continue living on their boats and others break into empty summer homes. The fact that thousands of radicalized, plain-clothed clowns are now covertly occupying this island is the basis for the next series of operations you're planning. To the untrained eye, your schematics may appear to be total madness, but as you, ass you assure yourself frequently, it is anything but. As far as you're concerned, your name could belong with the great tacticians of history someday. But only if you can maintain your focus and see this through which, you must admit, has been pretty difficult with this illness ravaging your body and mind, and with these damned visions getting more... There she was again. At least, you think that was her. It's always hard to be sure when it's happening in your peripheral vision. Or the periphery of your imagination, you guess. It's strange that you've been seeing her more often than him lately. 
he was never far off from your disturbed hallucinations for obvious reasons. The way he died, the nature of that sickness and what it did to him, it left a mark on your psyche that will probably never go away. But her? You just had a falling out and never spoke again. Is it guilt that's causing your mind to conjure her? You wrestle with the question for days, until finally an unassuming email that you stumbled on in your spam folder provides you with an answer. Someone was trying to collect on a medical bill of some sort. It's an ambulance fee, actually. An ambulance that was used about two months ago. They're trying to collect the bill from you, but the person originally billed wasn't you. It was her. The fact that they're trying to collect from you instead of your mother must mean it couldn't be, could it? You do some more digging. You call the hospital where the ambulance dropped her off. After some time on hold, you confirm. It's not the fact that she's dead that blows your mind, it's the date. April 20th. She caught COVID-19 in early April and died on 420, the day this lunacy all began. She's been dead for almost seven weeks and you never even knew it. Aside from being stunned by the revelation, you feel nothing. You only ever had one bullet of grief in the chamber and you used that when your dad died. You made the most of that bullet too. You used it to drive yourself insane, quit school, and run off to an island. If your dead mom is expecting any tears from you, well, she's shit out of luck. But you know she wouldn't be expecting anything of the sort. That's why she never called. Maybe she had different plans for you. Plans she didn't even know she had, or an impact on your life she didn't know she was causing. Perhaps it was the invocation of a dying curse from a bitter old woman, and that's what you've been contending with ever since the night she passed. You don't really associate the death of parents with grief or loss anymore. That was just another one of society's lies, that these were things you were supposed to feel. Instead, you feel like their departure represents a burdensome torch that's being passed, an inheritance of sorts. All the psychological baggage a parent accumulates within their, their whole life. And when they die, that lifetime of manic energy, the striving and struggling, the failures and disappointments, the things they wish they did, became but never did, all of it was has nowhere to go when the body dissolves, so it all flows right into you. That's how it was with your dad, watching him slip away slowly. The feeling of initial sadness for him gradually twisted into something that was nothing like sadness at all. More like a screaming inside that gets louder every day. He watched his desperation grow as he knew the end was near. He was being devoured in his final days by that feeling that he wasn't given nearly enough time on Earth. He fell so far short of turning his life into the thing he once imagined it would be, and the result of staring into the abyss was utter panic. And where does all that panic go? Who feels the blame, the sense of accusation, the demented rage over the unfairness of it all? It was you. Your true inheritance is this tortured understanding, an implied contract since the day of your birth, that you will be all that remains of his legacy. That now it's up to you to bring meaning through familial continuity into a life he just went to painful lengths to make clear he barely even considered worth living himself. But you had no intention of honoring that inheritance. The contract was worthless, partly because you never agreed to it. But more importantly, you gained disturbing insight into its author in the process of watching him die. You didn't lose respect for him, it was somehow worse than that. You began to question his agency as a human being, and you questioned his humanity itself. As the sickness tore away at him, it took little bits of his mind along the way. Your father's intellect and personality were being dismantled in such an alarming ways, you began to wonder if you even knew what a human being was anymore. But you don't really wonder anymore. You think you simply understand now. A person is a phenomenal illusion, carefully held together by healthy neurons which, once disrupted, appear as a series of hellish algorithms firing the wrong way all the time for the express purpose of creating horror in all those who believed they loved him. They believed they loved him because they believed he was real, not merely a jumble of algorithmic insanity which just happened to be executing in a proper sequential order most of the time. In fact, is that what you are too? 
a bunch of psychopathic inhuman algorithms firing, 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 firing until you get everyone who joins your movement killed, or if your algorithms aren't quite satisfied with that until you rip the country apart and get everyone killed? The coughing fits are heavier now, more frequent. You know this must be her influence. It makes no sense in any scientific way, but you can just feel it. Her ghostly hand closing around your throat. Your dad's curse was bestowing his existential insanity upon you. The burden of striving for the American dream, which cracked your brain and sent you running away for good. Your mom never forgave you for it, so her dying curse is this disease. The same one that claimed her, and you know how she thinks. Why shouldn't you have to suffer the same way she did? COVID-19 is highly contagious, but you wonder if anyone's yet realized it can be transmitted psychically by a vengeful spirit. It's probably time to just throw in the towel. Just stop all this running and hiding and turn yourself over to the cops before you can endanger anyone else. Sure, you'd disappoint a lot of people that way, millions who've become deeply invested in your defiance of this brutal, imperialistic police state, but the disappointment resulting from letting them all down would be a blessing at this point, relative to the scale of damage that the misfires of your algorithmic insanity could be truly capable of. Or maybe you don't even need to turn yourself in. Maybe the fact that your mom is trying to kill you here and now is her final act of mercy for you and everyone else. Maybe it'll just knock you off before you can even get the chance to realize your full destructive potential. Go ahead, you <coughs> you bitch. This is what you wanted, <coughs> isn't it, Bob? <coughs> so go ahead and fucking drag me <coughs> into the fucking grave with you already. Ding dong. You hear the doorbell ring. Now who the fuck could that be? Oh. It's Percy. He's just dropping off your supplies for the day. You really need to calm down. This disease has obviously been making you paranoid. There's clearly nothing to worry about. Purse? Were you followed? No, don't look, fool. Oh, shit. Get in here, quick. Fuck. Yeah, they were tailing you. Look at this shit. We're fucking surrounded. It must be the entire precinct out here. Purse, you can't be this sloppy. You fucked it all up. Okay, I'm sorry. This isn't your fault. I probably should have been had a different guy bringing me shit. You were already on their radar. Damn. I just keep pulling you deeper into hot water, don't I? Well, don't worry. I'll get you out of this shit. I'll get us both out. All I need is to accelerate the plan a little bit. Percy's face seems to ask the question. Plan? It was inevitable anyway. Not just here, everywhere in the country, apparently. These fuckers have a lot of blood on their hands. Their crimes are finally catching up with them. She's sending a skull emoji and a cop emoji to the Ring 3 group chat. thumbs up. Percy did used to speak. Remember, he had a different voice in chapter one than he did in chapter three. This is just pranks us. <laughs> yeah, this has gone off the rails. 
This is like off the rails in like a like if it was at an 100 before, it's at like a 600 now. I feel like they could have ramped this up a little better. I can't. I can't. <sighs> Percy didn't make it. But there's no time for tears. Now that you've gone this far with the accelerated version of your plan, there's no turning back. You need to put the whole thing into motion. What's that one? With the execution of this command, hundreds of Jubilate teams spring into action. Guys crawling out of the woodwork at almost every well-populated location on the island. But none of these guys are armed. In fact, none of them look remarkable in any way. Operation Brep. They could all be easily mistaken for locals, and they will be. Your assiduously planted false flag operation has begun. Anyone who looked at just one of the viral videos showing your plainclothed jubilites lurching out of their homes, grabbing their necks, and choking as they collapsed to their lawns and driveway asphalt might think the performance looked a little fishy. But you planted so many of these guys in so many locations, all staging this performance at the exact same time, resulting in so many pieces of independent footage that the full breadth of such content spreading rapidly across social media begins to have an alarming effect. You have guys harvesting all the footage coming in, searching out the best stuff, the most gripping, scariest portrayals of an invisible airborne agent cutting down the locals of Nantucket Island right outside their homes, and releasing the content strategically to optimize the proliferated shock. Then comes a few other touches, which requires no effort or planning at all. Real panic. Not from your guys, but from the true locals who start catching on to what's happening. Actual people screaming in the backgrounds of your footage near the pretend bodies, running away, getting into cars, peeling down residential roads. The panic isn't just good for optics, it's the entire purpose of this charade. Nobody gets hurt, they all just get out. The panic begins to trick, begins with a trickle, but once the media starts running the footage, it turns into a flood. Creating a stampede of people trying to leave the island all at once ordinarily would be irresponsible, you think. It would be if you didn't have a transportation plan ready to go, which, of course you do. If there's one thing you and your simp army isn't short on, it's boats. All the boats that brought them here plus a whole lot more which were idle in the ports waiting to be repurposed, are at the ready for the surge of frightened locals. Your teams take charge, yelling at the crowds which way to go. They load, cast off, and when they drop them off at the mainland, the empty boats will just turn around and head back for more. The whole fleet will keep at it, all night long if needed, until the island holds no one who wants to leave. As chaos swirls around the media in response to this attack, there are real questions about what actually happened even as everyone flees in desperation just to be safe. 
questions about who was responsible for the attack, whether it was even real, and why approximately 40 police officers were slaughtered in a shootout just as the attack began. And the talking heads of corporate media will surely spin, as they always do. But this is a narrative for you to control. Not through your dispatch teams, false flags, or leaked footage. As the leader of the Jubilate movement, this is something you need to address personally. It's not Im it's too important to let it wait. You fight through the pain of your gunshot wound and the shortness of breath caused by the violence and begin streaming to your fans right away. You announce to the world that federal authorities appear to have deployed a vicious biochemical attack intended to target you and the members of your movement which have been organizing on this island. They've seen how dangerous the Jubilites have been to the stability of state and corporate power, and they decided to crush the opposition at its source. But you and your most loyal survi supporters survived, retreating into shelters until the attack subsides. You go on to urge any civilians who haven't yet evacuated to leave for their own safety. You seize upon the moment to swear vengeance on the state which committed this atrocity, to continue escalating the many means many pockets of insurgency already boiling over across the country. No reason to waste an opportunity to continue taking the fight to them. Over the last week of riots, you've seen state power bleed, and as long as there's blood in the water, you might as well release your sharks. Fighting for air makes the transmission difficult. At first, you curse your luck again, wondering if it's even possible to have contracted this disease at a worse time. But as you desperately cough out your angry statement to the world, you'll realize it's a nice touch. It helps sell the idea that you just survived a biochemical attack. Once you recover, if you recover, you'll tell Abby you couldn't have scripted it any better if you tried. But you can't call her to brag about the bleeding of the stuck pig that is the United States of America just yet, because there's your own bleeding to attend to. And that of the fallen comrades. Despite the losses suffered today, you can't help but reflect on what a successful implementation of Pranksys this all has been. Really not a bad day of work for a concept you bullshitted into existence through a series of hallucinatory revelations. You suddenly wonder if the Founding Fathers ever had similar thoughts about the Constitution. None of the material that was... None of the material is anywhere near as fun as cool as yours, though. Still. Whatever moves they made or words they wrote, you guess it was strong enough to earn them all several centuries of retroactive dick sucking in the history books. Even Washington's lowliest of simps probably got their own due. And yours will too. All right, unnecessary. This is Pranksis. Rest in peace, loyal simp. You are the first casualty of war. Oh, she finally changed her phone background. That, ladies and gentlemen, was the end of Chapter 5. We're only halfway through this thing. <laughs> we are only halfway through this thing. <laughs> to be continued.